Let's take uh, one more case study on uh, capital structuring. A company earns a profit of uh, 3 lakh per annum after meeting its interest liability of 1 lakh 20 thousand at on 12 percent debenture. The tax rate is 50 percent. The number of equity shares of rupees 10 each or 80 thousand and the retained earnings amounts to rupees 12 lakh. The company proposes to take up an expansion scheme for which sum of rupees 4 lakh is required. It is anticipated that after expansion, the company will be able to achieve the same return on investment as at present. The funds required for expansion can be raised either through debt at the rate of 12% or by issuing the equity shares at par. Required, you have to compute the earnings per share if additional funds were raised as debt, if additional funds were raised by issue of equity shares, advise the company as to which source of finance is preferable. So here you have the information, the company is already earning a profit after meeting its interest. Okay, so it is basically earnings after interest. So earnings before interest, how much? How do we find what is the earnings before interest? It's simple. It is 3 lakh plus 1 lakh 20,000. So that's the earnings before interest. And can we guess what could be the debenture amount? We know interest is 1 lakh 20. So debenture is 1 lakh 20 is basically representing 12%. So if you can find out what is this 1 lakh 20 which represents 12% then you will know what is the debenture okay so we can find debenture in that way then you have tax rate information you have number of equity all these are fine but what is required is you have to find out what is going to be the EPS if the additional funds raised were debt or equity now now the question is if additional funds are going to be raised as debt or if additional funds are going to be raised as equity, how do you find out EPS? If you want to find out EPS, one very, very critical information required is what is the profit after tax? How do you find out what is the profit after tax? See, already this company is earning 3 lakhs. Okay. And what will happen to their earning if they take up this expansion plan? Whether any information is available? Let's uh, just read the question again. Do we have any information as to what will happen to their earnings? We know that company earns a profit of 3 lakh before or after meeting its interest. You have information about equity share capital. You have information about retained earnings. They are taking up expansion at a cost of 4 lakh. It is anticipated that after expansion, the company will be able to achieve same return on investment as at present. So here actually you have a, uh, a greater testing because they have not given you what is the PAT. They have not given you what is the earnings before interest and tax. Nothing is given. You have to find out. And what is the only clue available? They told that return on investment before expansion and return on investment after expansion are going to be same okay so from that what we understand is roi roi that is return on investment before expansion is going to be equal okay is going to be equal to after expansion so how do you find what is the return on investment? Okay. How do you find what is the return on investment? And what is the formula for return on investment? The formula for return on investment is nothing but EBIT divided by total capital employed. Okay. So if you can find out what is EBIT, if you can find out what is total capital employed, you will be able to find out what is written on investment before expansion and that you can equate for after expansion and then you will be able to find. So now, our exercise is finding out what is earnings before interest and taxes. How do we find? Let's go back to the question. Here you have the company earns a profit of 3 lakh after meeting interest of 1 lakh 20,000. So that's a clue for us. That's a clue for us to find EBIT. Okay. So let me have a working note 1. I'll have working note 1. Working note 1 that is computation of EBIT. 
I know what is my earnings after interest. What is earnings after interest? How much? It is 3 lakh. I know what is my interest. What is my interest? It is 1 lakh 20,000. Okay. So if I add both, I'll say this is A, B. So if I add both, what I'm going to get is E, B, I, T. Okay. So I'm adding both. Here I'll get E, B, I, T is equal to 4 lakh 20,000. Okay. 4 lakh 20,000. In this way, we got one item that is the numerator, which is E, B, I, T. The second item is we should find out what is the total capital employed. How do we find total capital employed? Let's go back to the question. What are the capital items you have? You know that uh, there is a debenture. Okay, there is a debenture. 1 lakh 20 interest you have paid on 12% debenture. So if you divide 1 lakh 20 by 12%, you will get debenture. So that is one of the capital fund. And they have got equity shares of 80,000 of rupees. 10 so 80,000 into 10 8 lakh that is one of the equity or say capital employed and there is a retained earnings 12 lakhs okay so 12 lakh plus 8 lakh 20 lakh plus this 1 lakh 20,000 on 12 percent if you if you uh, find the full value it is going to be 10 lakh okay in that way you will be able to find what is the total capital employed so we'll have working note 2 where we'll find what is the total capital employed? Working note 2. It is total capital employed. From that, we'll take uh, uh, three arrows. The first one is equity share capital. So what was the equity share capital? It is basically 80,000 shares into 10 each. So it is going to be 8 lakhs. What about retained earnings? Retained earnings, it is a direct information. Let's check here. What is the retained earnings? Retained earnings was 12 lakh. Okay, so directly we'll put that. Retained earnings is 12 lakhs. What about debentures? How do we find debentures? Debentures is basically 12 lakh or 12% 12 debenture. Interest paid is 1,20,000 divided by 12%. So it would work out to 10 lakh. So now if you can add all the three, 8 lakh plus 12 lakh plus 10 lakh. So 20 plus 10, you know your total capital employed is going to be 30 lakhs. Okay. So here you have your total capital employed, which is 30 lakhs. Here you have, what is your EBIT, which is 4,20,000. So I'm going back here. I'm going to employ them. EBIT is 4,20,000 divided by total capital employed. How much it is? 30 lakhs. So let me just check the calculation. Yeah. The calculation says. My calculation says uh, it works out to 14% because 4 lakh 20 divided by 30 lakh it works out to 14%. So this is the message for us to find out what is going to be the profits. Okay, because before expansion my return on investment is 14% and what is said is after expansion also my return on investment is going to be 14%. So what is the return on investment? It is EBIT divided by total capital employed is equal to 14 percent now there is a question do we know what is ebit answer is no do we know what is total capital employed that we can find because the existing capital employed is 30 lakh and the project is going to be taken up at a cost of 4 lakh so now we can say total capital employed is going to be 34 lakh okay because already we know it is 30 lakhs plus new capital required of 4 lakh. So EBIT is nothing but 34 lakh into 14%. So I'll put that here. EBIT is equal to 34 lakhs into 14%. So what is the figure? 
34 lakh into 14 uh, percent let me check the calculation it works out to 4 lakh 76 thousand so my EBIT is 4 lakh 76 thousand so this is going to serve as the base for me to proceed further because my intention is to calculate EPS and if I want to calculate EPS I should know what is my EBIT I have my EBIT in place okay so with this available EBIT let's uh, go further and uh, find EPS uh, let me have a fresh working note computation of EPS and I have two funding options the first option is uh, let's say I'll go for debt and the second option I'm going to go for equity and what is my EBIT just now we have calculated the EBIT what we have calculated now is 4,76,000 in both cases it will be 4,76 and since this is EBIT from this we have to subtract interest less interest and please remember already this company has got an interest how much it was 1,20,000 it is 12% interest on debenture 1,20,000 that interest got to be serviced whether you are going for a debt option or an equity option okay so here also this 1,20,000 got to be subtracted keep that in mind then there is a new interest let me put that here less new interest see new interest is applicable only on your debt option okay what is your debt amount it is 4 lakh 4 lakh into 12 percent is that right 4 lakh into 12 percent it's going to be 48,000 and understand it is applicable only for your debt option here it is not applicable because you are going for equity okay now uh, we'll subtract these two items so we'll get what is EBT so item number D, what we are going to get is earnings before tax, which is nothing but item number A minus B minus C. So 476 minus 120 minus 48,000 will give you 3,8,000. And if you take this one, it is going to be 476 minus 120, it will give you 356,000. And this is basically earnings before tax. So we have to deduct tax less tax and what is the tax rate question says tax rate is 50% okay so it is 3,8,000 into 50 it is going to be 1,54,000 so automatically our profit after tax will also be the same figure so I will do that immediately it is going to be 1,54,000. And if you take the other one, 356,000, 50% 50 is going to be the tax, it is 178,000. So profit after tax is also 178,000. Okay. Now we have to divide this by number of shares. So let me change the view. Yeah. We have to divide this by number of shares. So here I should divide it by number of shares. Item G, number of equity shares. How many equity shares they have? Question says already they have 80,000 equity shares. And that 80,000 will not undergo any change if you are going for debt option. This is your debt option. So already they have 8 lakh equity shares. Sorry, 8 lakh share capital of 10 each. So their equity shares are 80,000. But if they go for the second option where they are going to raise the money through their own source, they have to raise their entire 4 lakh through equity and if they are going for their own source what should be the number of equity shares already they got 8 lakh okay plus 4 lakh should be issued it means they will have 12 lakh 12 lakh divided by 10 so number of shares will become 1 lakh 20 thousand okay so you know the number of equity shares now now we can find EPS item number H EPS is nothing but item number F divided by G that is PAT divided by number of equity shares 1,54,000 divided by 80,000 calculation says it is 1.925 
and here 178000 divided by 120000 calculation series it is 1.48 now look at here if you look at option 1 in option 1 you get eps of 1.925 in option 2 you get eps of 1.48 so what it says is if you go for equity option you get a lesser eps if you go for debt option your eps will increase so the conclusion is the company should select option 1 that is it should go for debt funding for the project so that the eps can be at its maximum